Kyagurley Castle, home of giants, ghouls and ghostly hounds. Built in 1277 on the Welsh border with England, its walls still stand to this day, defiant against the unforgiving onslaught of time. Join Steve and his earthly bodied assistant as we turn back the clock and boldly step into the foreboding darkness of a Welsh midwinter's night. After all, they're only myths, aren't they? Welcome back to the Super Sensible Steve Show. This week is the third and final entry into the North Wales three-part specials. As you've already seen from the intro, we'll be investigating Kai Gurley Castle. It was built by David Ap Griffith in the 13th century on land that was gifted to him for his role in the First War of Welsh Independence. Despite being the brother of the Prince of Wales at the time, he fought on the side of the English and Edward I. However, in 1282, five years after work on the castle had begun, David rebelled against the English kings, sparking the Second War of Welsh Independence. This change of mind proved costly for David, and King Edward I of England launched an all-out conquest of Wales, resulting in David's capture. He later became the first man on record to be hung, drawn and quartered for the crime of high treason. Hi Steve, is your editor here? I just wanted to say it's hanged, drawn and quartered, not hung, drawn and quartered. Just thought I'd let you know, thanks. Once the castle was taken under royal rule, it passed through a number of different owners. In 1283, a fire broke out and gutted the castle, and its full potential was never reached. In 1308, the castle was given to John of Cromwell under condition that the castle was repaired. His efforts have gone largely unknown, as in 1335, the castle was reported as ruinous. From the 14th century to present day, stone has been robbed for building material, and part of the wall has collapsed due to quarrying. One of the great mysteries of the castle, which still puzzles archaeologists to this day, is the placement of the entrance to the castle. Many theories have been put forward, but we are here for a different kind of mystery altogether. We briefly touched on Gurley the Giant in the last episode, who some think was the source of the place name Kagurli itself. It's said that he used to live in the castle, and is now buried at a nearby Neolithic burial ground. Even though the castle is built on the site of an older Dark Ages fortress, I'm not quite sure how these two time periods could possibly align. But if Gurley Giant has long gone, what are we hoping to find on our investigation? Well, there are two main ghosts that are said to haunt the castle. The first being a little old lady, appearing to be from the Victorian period, wearing a cloak and bonnet similar to that of the Salvation Army. She is said to float above the floor as she glides around the castle grounds. We also have a ghostly black dog, that reportedly jumps over the castle ruins and sprints off into the village. You may think that this is merely a dog, however, the canine glides above the ground. Could these two gliding entities point to residual energy echoing through time and retracing their footsteps on different terrain to what we can see in front of us now? Let's find out. So here we are at Kaigo the Castle, and um, there's a full moon tonight. You can see up there. The story goes there's an old lady that floats around um, in kind of Salvation Army attire. Also, a black dog said to chase people around. Probably the weather's not great for any trigger objects or any thermal measurement. It's rather cold, but uh, we do have EMF meters as usual. If the old lady's here, can you uh, show yourself on the camera or approach me? Whisper anything into the microphone. What we'll do? We'll take a look at the uh, EMF. So 
So if there's a spirit around, if you look at the green light, if you approach the light, you can interact that with that light and turn it to red. If the old lady's here, The old lady is here, are you part of the Salvation Army or is that just something you like to wear? There's the black dog around, it's difficult to interact with a dog obviously. Turn the UV lamp back on. The lady say, come towards me. Let's turn that light to red. I'll go walk for a walk with the. Obviously, that's triggering because of the light, the torch in my hand. Uh, we'll go for a little wander around to walk here because the, uh, the terrain's a bit awkward. That's been as well. That's been. Uh, I've got to be careful not to fall into the well. But this is an old well that's been um, boarded up essentially. While we're on this wall, we can bust out the, uh, the laser grid. If the old lady's around here, can you walk in front of the green lights? Or well, the black dog, can you run in front of the lights? I know dogs like to chase laser pointers. If anyone's there, please walk forward. So the dog barking then, but as I said before, there's a village below, so. again but it's way off in the distance really. So that brings our North Wales investigations to a close. No sign of a little old lady, however a dog's bark could be heard when reaching out to the entities. Could this be the spirit of the black dog of Kaigurley Castle replying to our calls? Maybe. But due to the surrounding area being on the edge of a village, I'd have to conclude that this is merely a family pet at a nearby home. But what do you think? Drop a comment below. And if you enjoyed these investigations, why not subscribe to be notified when new episodes are released? Until next time, goodbye.